I think it's understandable to be cautious or even dismissive of supplements. Many have little to no good quality evidence behind them. But fascinatingly, we have a brand new randomized controlled trial on cancer and how a supplement actually helps prevent cancer. Now, in fact, the initial study released several years ago, but I don't actually don't remember it getting many headlines. Now, however, a follow-up study has been published in a big journal, Cell Reports Medicine. Now, the supplement is berberin, a naturally occurring molecule extracted from the barberry plant. So, what can we take away from this study? And I'll actually go ahead and tell you, there's something pretty remarkable about this supplement captured in the second study that I'll tell you about. Initially, we, I mean scientists, looked at berberin by conducting a randomized control trial by including almost 1,000 participants randomly assigned to consume berberin in pill form twice a day, or an identical looking pill that did not contain berberin called the placebo. Now, both groups were instructed to keep taking their respective pills for two years. Now, the outcome of interest was the development of adenomas, meaning precancerous abnormal growths in the colon. These aren't guaranteed to grow into cancer, but they are much more likely because they share some, though not all, of the characteristics of cancer. Looking at the data, you can focus on the graph for simplicity. The black dotted line is the comparison line. If anything touches it, it means that the result is not statistically significantly identified to have an effect. Now, if it moves to the left, there is an effect detected. I don't need to spell it out more than that. The berberine group clearly experienced fewer adenomas than the placebo over the two years of berberine consumption. This was confirmed in a variety of different ways. Ultimately, we're looking at a 23% reduced risk. The point here is that berberine directly protects against precancerous growths forming in the colon. But it doesn't stop there because there are also severities of cancer progression. Now, you've probably heard of stages one, two, three, and four for cancers. They describe severity. Now, in colon cancer, looking at adenomas, the size, the shape, the color, the structure determines if it's advanced or non-advanced. So the question is, does berberin help reduce the severity of what gross do form? The answer is again, yes. In fact, almost 50%, though the exact number is a bit in the air considering what are known as confidence intervals. But based on these data, yes, a near 50% reduction in advanced adenomas. This of course follows through with the non-advanced as well because the overall risk was reduced as we went over. Now, we're talking about berberin not only being protective overall against precancerous lesions, but also reduces the severity of whatever lesions might still appear. Remarkable. Now, that's all pretty impressive, right? Like I mentioned, there's plenty of room for skepticism around supplements, but here we're getting some pretty solid proof that something that we don't normally engage with may provide some benefit. But what if I told you this first study isn't even the most impressive? The most impressive lies in this follow-up study and is all beautifully illustrated in this one image. But before that, aren't you the least bit curious on exactly how berberin does this? Are we absorbing berberin and then it launches rockets at precancerous cells? Is it befriending cancer cells and then stabbing them as they yell, "He tu Brutus? I like to think that, but that's probably not what's happening. Now, what's been proposed is that common tumorigenesis pathways, which means cancer-promoting pathways within our cells, are inhibited by berberin. So as berberin is absorbed by these colonocytes, these colon cells, it interacts with proteins in our cells, preventing the signals from pushing procancerous. Even outside the cell, berberin is believed to change the microbiome by changing the microbiome environment possibly making it less hospitable place for colorectal cancer to grow. Now, I'd actually like to touch on this a little bit later again, because I could envision a scenario where berberin is ineffective for many people. Now, in short, berberin is proposed to work directly at inhibiting cancer cell growth and indirectly by promoting an anti-cancerous gut microbiome. So we've been going over the general effects of berberin and cancer prevention, 
And there's much more in different subgroups, like the effects based on age, history of cancer, uh, other health issues, severity of adenomas, and more. I'm covering that in the extended version of this video that you're watching, along with supplement recommendations. If you're interested in access to it, plus all my work in video, written, and audio form, all ad-free, plus all these perks like live sessions with me and the community, get access by becoming a Physionic Insider. It helps me continue my work here, and it's a wealth of information broken down into actionable steps and additional nuances. The link to join is in the description box. Hope to see you there. Now, to this second study, I'll keep this as simple as I can. This is a follow-up on a randomized control trial that we covered. That means most of the same participants were enrolled and assessed years later, after the study conclusion, so six years to be exact. Now, I'm going to show you the graph again, and then I'm going to drop a bombshell on you. A good bombshell, if such a thing exists. Here it is. I feel like I should add angelic music to a company, as you'll understand shortly. You can ignore the table with the numbers. I'm including it for those that know how to read it. For those more visually and less numerically crazed, notice the 1.0 line running horizontally. That is our baseline risk. If the squares and lines move down from that line, there's reduced adenoma recurrence, as in reduced chance of adenomas returning. Each datum is a different year, the two initial years of the trial and then six more follow-up years. You see it, right? You do notice that with every passing year, we get tighter and tighter data indicating Berberin continues incredibly to reduce the risk of these pesky adenomas. So this means there is a continued long-term colon cancer risk reduction. Pretty striking, but here's the bombshell. The participants were no longer consuming berberin. That's right. The first two years they were, but the final six years as risk was still reduced, they weren't. Now, that's an incredible finding. I don't care what anybody says. So this means that berberin consumption associates with long-term reduced risk of colorectal cancer, even when consumption is stopped years back. You may have noticed I said the word associates, and that actually wasn't a slip of the tongue. It's a deliberate choice of words to indicate that these data are no longer causative. The reason is that because of the length of the study time, there was no randomization of the included participants, though they were originally randomized, and there's no intervention anymore. I think someone could argue this is a bit of a quasi-situation where we could make uh, some claims to causation, but there's plenty of space there for other influencing factors. Now, to be fair, the researchers did account for many influencing factors. So all these data are certainly exciting. We have good quality evidence that Berberin works here, but I did mention there might be one pause to the excitement. If we think back to one of the main proposed mechanisms of action and considering the long-standing effects, it is entirely possible that people who already have a healthy microbiome may not experience benefit from berberin. The participant pool was entirely Chinese, so nutrition style may play a role in the effectiveness since nutrition is a heavy player in changing our microbiome. Would this apply to European cultural foods or African? Would it apply to people consuming a ketogenic diet, a plant-dominant diet? We don't know that yet. Another limitation, though not as serious in my mind, is the fact that these studies focus on people with adenomas in their past and have been removed. So would this still apply in people without issues with their colon? We don't know that yet. These data are not exclusive to people with colorectal cancer past, but they may not be representative of a healthy population either, which may also speak to my first point further. What we do know is that accepting these limitations, 600 milligrams of berberin split into two doses was effective at protecting against colorectal cancer linked gross, with a need for more studies to confirm these results by other researchers, other studies in different groups of people, and so on. So where does that leave you? First, we saw good evidence that berberin protects against the number and severity of precancerous growths in the colon. This effect may be long-standing, continuing for five or more years, even when no longer consuming berberin. As for what to do, 
Well, that depends. There were few side effects from berberine supplementation across these studies. And if you have a history of abnormal growths in the colon, it may be worth trying berberine. Now, if you do not have a history of colorectal cancer, there's no data here that offers definitive evidence for you. But it wouldn't surprise me if this translated to people without a history of precancerous growth. So it may be worth a shot too. The dose used was 600 milligrams per day. If you're interested in independently tested supplements, I offer a list that I'm not affiliated with in my Physionic Insider subscription. Keep in mind that this is still early days, but certainly nothing to ignore, even if we need more data to confirm and learn some of the additional nuances. There's some additional work that I've done on the benefits of berberine, which I cover right here too. Or if you're interested in uh, cancer prevention directly, there's a powerful way simply consuming more of this nutrient. Of course, I can't tell you what that nutrient is. That would spoil the fun. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.